Hello everyone. I'm here in my house to show you guys some really fun rings. Um, today I'm going to be focusing on shapes. So um, today I have some pears, an emerald, some ovals, a cushion, a marquee, and round. So we'll go through them. I have about nine rings to show you guys. Um, so I'm going to start today with um, two of the pear rings that I have. Um, let's start with the super classic one. So this pair I have is a solitaire. It's set in our six prong petite comfort fit. And it's about a 1.25 carat. Pairs are really fun because you can wear them two different ways. Um, traditionally, not even traditionally, but I'd say most people tend to wear them point up. So kind of like that, it's facing elongated with the finger um, as opposed to point down, which is another way some people wear it. It's not as popular, but like I said, it's fun because you can kind of change it up day to day if you want something that's a little bit more versatile in that sense. And then, like I said, this one is the six prong petite comfort fit. I'll give a little bit of a zoom in for you guys. So it has a really dainty, approximately 1.5 millimeter band. Throw back in the up phase. There she is. I believe Sophie Turner has a pair. So they kind of had an upsurge. I think Cardi B might have a pair as well. I am not as attuned to celebrities, but I know pairs are popular. So let me switch on over to our pair Waverly that I have. This one is going to look a lot bigger because one, it has a halo and two, it is a bigger diamond. So this one is about a two carat uh, equivalent in terms of pairs. Um, I talked a little bit about carat last week and how it kind of ties in with size, but a pair is a fancy shaped diamond. And that means that just because we're saying it's two carats doesn't mean all pairs are going to look exactly the same. Pairs can have different length to width ratios, meaning that some are a little bit wider or some are a little bit longer. So like a skinnier pair versus a shorter pair. So that is something you can filter by on our website if you do have a preference. And if you wanna figure out if you have a preference, just scroll through the diamonds and take a look at them. Um, I would say this one's kind of in a middle range, so zoom on in for you guys on this pair Waverly. Okay, so that's our pair. Fancy pair in the Waverly. Next, I'm going to move on to oval. So an oval, I would say, is a really popular shape right now. I've had lots of customers come to me talking about finding an oval diamond. Um, there are a lot of available ones on the website right now. So ovals are quite popular. The first one I have is in the Aria, which is one of our more popular um, three stone settings. I held up two three stone settings. Um, so I'm going to pop that on and show you this. And this is approximately a 1.25. For reference, I know you guys always ask, my ring size is about a 4.75, sometimes a 5, depends on the day, how hot it is. So there we have the Aria. Catching the light from the sun. About 1.25. Ovals are a really fun shape. I consider myself to have shorter fingers. So I like an elongated stone because I feel like it elongates my hand. Um, some people like a wider stone because um, feel like, they feel like it takes more surface area up on the width of their finger and therefore makes it maybe look bigger. Um, all personal preference, but I have heard the length elongation from a lot of my customers and I personally find that to be true as well. A lot of people don't have very nice things to say about their hands. So we're gonna add something to them. Let's make it a positive addition. 
Cool. And I'm going to throw on our next ring, which is in rose gold. Um, and this is the Linea. This is a really cool double banded ring. Um, kind of, you know, if you want to do the wedding band and engagement ring in one fell swoop, it's a great ring for that. This is approximately a two carat oval. Um, once again, I'm saying it's approximate because not all two carats are created equal. This one I would say is a little bit wider in terms of the oval shape, probably closer to that 1.35 length to width ratio, but that's just from me eyeballing it. So you can see it is a pave band, but there are two of them. This one is rose gold, approximately two carats, and y'all, it has a hidden halo such a pretty detail and it's nice because as these kind of come together the hidden halo allows the connection of them to be really really seamless so pave is the accent diamonds right here on the side and it's how they're set these ones in particular are set with scalloped pave meaning they have four prongs each and they have a little use from the side Generally, when we say pave, we mean diamond accented, small diamonds, um, usually kind of depends. Pave can be larger, but right now, dainty is pretty in. Okay, I'm going to get up close and personal. This one. So this is the Linea from Rose Gold, two carat oval. Okay, let's switch on up to, we'll go with another elongated shape. Um, this one is a called a marquee. Um, it's one that I would say most people don't know about, or if they know about it, they don't necessarily know what the shape is called. So it's called a marquee. I believe it's a French word. Sounds French at least. Um, and it has a really pretty elongation to it. So it's kind of like if you took the tip of a pear and you know got rid of the round part, so it was just the tip and the tip. So it's kind of like a pear is in between an oval and a marquee if we're looking at it on a sliding scale. So we have the opera diamond ring here with a marquee. Okay, this is probably about 1.25 carats. Marquees I personally find sometimes tend to be a little bit more um, visually larger when we're talking carrot to carrot, comparing it to other shapes. They do expand across a lot of your finger, so that's sometimes why they can feel a little bit bigger as well. Let me zoom in on this one for you. That is the opera. And the opera of the opera, the marquee, looks really fun in the opera because it kind of pulls off that elongation. I've um, personally had a lot of people do this specific shape in this. Looks really, really lovely with three stones. Marquees almost have like a vintage feel to them, um, although I wouldn't necessarily say they were considered a fully vintage stone. Um, but it does give off that that feeling that the ring is a little bit it's a little bit of history to it. Marquis another one that's going to have a length to width ratio, meaning how long versus how wide it is. Some are skinnier, some are wider. That's something you can see on the website as well. You can kind of identify if you know you have a particular length to width ratio that you like best. See how these kind of play together? It's really pretty. Okay, let's move on to cushion. So I have a cushion diamond for us in a halo, and this is considered a fancy halo since the cushion is a fancy shape. Um, even my roommates were asking earlier, what is a fancy shape? Like, why is it fancy? 
Um, a fancy shape are all of the shapes really other than a round brilliant. So a round brilliant is going to have a very specific um, kind of shape that we know exactly how to cut it. Not we as in me, I don't cut stones, but gem cutters have an exact um, idea of how to cut a round brilliant. Um, the other fancy shapes, we don't have as much of an exact idea. Well, there's definitely parameters for fancy shapes that gem cutters are trying to adhere to, but it's not an end-all be-all. These look the same shape every single time. So this one is a cushion. Um, cushions are really cool. One, because they have a really nice best of both worlds feel. They're not as square as a princess cut, but they're not round either. So if you're looking for something that's kind of in that in-between, this is a great option. Some cushions will have like a really crushed glass look, which is really pretty. It kind of looks like a really, really fine sparkle. This one sort of has that if you can see. And then some will look a little bit more like a round brilliant where the facets are a little bit more clear. You can kind of see that through videos of different cushion diamonds. And for carrot, I would say this one's approximately 1.5 but it does have a halo so that can be a little bit i want to say deceiving but it changes a little bit from afar so when you get up close you'll see center stone halo from afar it kind of blends a little bit more so so you don't really notice the the difference it will look a little bit bigger like i said this is approximately 1.5 when you add the halo though that's definitely creating a different visual a little bit closer for you guys. Cushions are also cool because um, they're one of the more the older shapes that when we were first cutting gems, we didn't know exactly how to cut a perfectly round diamond. So cushions kind of came to be in that sense. Um, there are were a lot of stones that were like kind of round, kind of square. Um, so that's kind of how the cushion came about. Um, but it is still really popular and really, really beautiful. We have diamonds starting at around the 0.3 range all the way up to, I think, 10. Um, so it kind of depends on what you're looking for in the ring. If you know you want a halo and you're trying to achieve a certain size, you can tend to go a little bit smaller. You have to take into consideration the width of the halo is going to be added to the overall, to the overall ring, to the overall visual. So that's a cushion. Um, and last but not least, I have rounds. Rounds, I would say, are the most popular um, shaped stone that we do sell. They're super classic. They're super symmetrical. You know, what's not to like about a round diamond? They are created and cut to optimize light refraction. So they tend to be very, very sparkly. Um, the first one I have for us is a approximately 1.25 carat diamond. And it is in the Elodie, which is one of my personal favorite solitaire styles. And it's just super classic. When you are getting a round diamond, when you're getting any diamond really, I recommend optimizing for cut. Cut is something that will make the diamond sparkly. Oh, this is not the last one. I do have an emerald. Thanks for reminding me, guys. That's my favorite. So I saved it for last. We'll say that. Um, so a round diamond, optimizing sparkle, perfectly symmetrical, like acting like I'm going to punch the screen. So I'll zoom in on that one for you guys. Okay, 
The next one I have is a little bit bigger. I know some of you guys were requesting some larger carrots. Um, don't have the exact carrot on me for this one, um, but it is, I would say, approximately a 3.5 plus um, center stone. It is a little bit bigger on a diamond accented band. Too big, it's too heavy, it's falling off my finger because the ring size is a little bit big. This is approximately 3.5. So I'm trying to get mostly ring and less face. And keep in mind all, like I said, this is approximately about 3.5, all diamonds. It's going to feel different based on your hands and your finger shape and style. Um, sometimes I look at this and I'm like, this is huge. Um, I do tend to have smaller hands. So um, it is all about proportionality and finding something that you think is going to be the best for you. Because just because it's the best for someone else doesn't mean it's the best for you. So, like I said, approximately 3.5 carats. It might be slightly bigger. Um, I was trying to measure it earlier. But it is big. That is one thing we do know. And this is a round, super classic. On a diamond accented band. This is called the petite shared prong. Okay, last but not least, I have the Embrace Diamond Ring, which has um, trapezoids on the side and about a three carat emerald cut in the middle. You'll notice when we're transitioning from that round diamond to this emerald cut diamond that it might look a little bit smaller. That is true. Emerald cuts can be a little bit more bottom heavy because they have faceting patterns that require more carat to be deeper into the stone and that you know doesn't reflect as well on the top um they are totally emeralds are totally different than all the other shapes um other than ashers as they're called step cuts meaning that they have a more of like a hall of mirrors like sparkle rather than that tra traditional round brilliant type sparkle so this is the embrace so if you look close you'll find that it has this center stone and then it has these Accent. Sorry, I'm trying to find the correct lighting for you guys. And then it has, and it's basket set, so it'll feel really nice and low to the hand. If you want something that has a lot of wow, this is definitely one of them. Emerald cuts will also have different length to width ratios. If you're going for something that is more square, like a one length to width ratio, that's actually called an asher, which is a different shape. Um, ashers are really beautiful too. They're essentially just a square emerald. I'd say this one is tends to be on the shorter side for emeralds, probably about a 1.35 length to width ratio. I'm gonna put it on my middle finger so it stops sliding around but some can come a little bit longer. Some people have a preference with this, some don't. I love all emerald cuts. And approximately three carats. So the rings that we were looking at earlier, we had two pairs, a six prong petite comfort fit with approximately 1.25 carat. This is the Waverly with approximately a two carat pair. We had the Embrace, which has these trapezoids. And that's an approximately three carat emerald. We have the linea with an approximate two carat oval in rose gold. And then we have the aria, which is a 1.25 equivalent oval. So lots of different shapes. 
transition them out for the other ones. Next, we have this big diamond on the petite shared prom. 3.5 carats, maybe slightly more. We have a 1.25 carat solitaire, that's the Elodie. We have the Opera with a approximately 1.25 carat marquee. And then we have this approximately 1.5 carat cushion and the fancy halo with side stones. My finger size is a approximately a 4.75 for reference. Alrighty guys, those are all the rings I have for us today. Um, thank you so much for, for joining in to kind of talk about these different shapes. Um, if you have questions about anything that I said, I know some of it can get a little bit in depth when you are picking a diamond. Um, please reach out to us. Um, we're happy to help. If you want to utilize our chat function or call into our customer service line, that is a great way to speak with a jewelry specialist, someone who wants to help you pick out the perfect diamond. We're not commission based, so we really just want to help. Um, you can also book a virtual appointment online. These are super helpful for going through the website and kind of talking through the different diamond options because there are a lot. Um, talking through Natural versus Lab, all of that. So thank you so much for joining. Um, I will see you guys next week. Bye.